Hey guys, James with Torches and Tactical, and today we're looking at the O-Knife Borzoi. That's right, this is a knife instead of a flashlight. And they sent this to me so I could take a look at it, tell you guys what I thought, and we could go over all the ins and outs, ups, downs, and left and right. No, I'm just kidding, not the left and right, but I can tell you about the good and the bad about it. And this is a slim EDC almost carry, and you can see that the, it has a frame lock right here, but getting into a lot of these specifications, so it only does come in this black color and has some blue anodized accents, even though you do have a smooth anodized finish here. Or if you look at it really up close, you can see that it is basically a, a machined or very, very smooth anodized, but you have a blasted surface on this backspacer here, but we'll get into more of that here in a second. So in addition to that black and blue anodizing, you can see that this side of the handle here is a machined and textured G10 scale. Uh, on the other side though, you have a pocket clip with a lanyard hole as well as the other side of the scale. And this is stainless steel, both done in a black finish just to keep everything nice, uniform and sleek looking. So what's really nice about it is this G10 gives a lot of really, really good grip. So when you are holding it, you don't feel like you're gonna end up losing grip of it at all. And it, it works really, really well. So moving on, to help facilitate that grip, you can see that all of these screws are recessed quite a bit. None of them stick out further than the actual scale itself, especially on the stainless side. You can definitely see all of that. Now with the one exception that the pivot screw does come in quite a bit more proud. If I hold it upright, you can see that you are able to see that come out on both sides of the scales. But that pivot, while it is done in that blue anodizing, it is a D-style pin, so you can easily make sure that it's not going to start to loosen while the knife is open and closed many, many times. As far as screw sizes go, I did run it through and double check everything, but the pivot here does seem to be a T8, while the pocket clip screws here, these are T7s and every other one, including on the frame lock, these are all a T6 screw. Now getting into the blade, you can see the stamping here for D2. This is a D2 blade. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So this is D2 blade and it does measure at 60 plus or minus two for an HRC hardness scale. And besides that D2 marking, the only detraction you do see from this very, very nice stone wash finish is the O-Knife logo right here. Now, I'm not gonna say it's a detraction in the sense that like it looks bad, but more like it breaks up the lines. So here you can see the Borzoi name as well as your serial number. That's right, these are all serialized. And other than that, if you look on the spine, you will notice a little bit of chamfer jimping here. Now that gives you quite a bit of control with your thumb. You don't have to worry about your thumb slipping off. However, it only does extend past the scales about a quarter inch. I would like to see that come out just a little bit further because, I mean, I don't feel like I have any grip issues with my thumb on the back of the scale, but if I really want to dig into it, a little more jimping here would help facilitate some extra, extra grip. Now you've seen me open it a few times already, and I'll tell you now that the action is very, very snappy once it finally breaks free from that ball detent. And that ball detent maybe just needs broken in a little bit, but the ball detent does seem very, very stiff right now. But as soon as you get past that ball detent, very quick, very snappy action. I really like how this feels. So looking at the tip, you can see that they focused a little more on keeping the bevel consistent as opposed to keeping the depth of the grind consistent but we'll keep moving down and i'm actually quite pleased uh, i don't see any sort of burring at all uh, mainly the the knife held a very very sharp edge and i'm i'm quite pleased with the with the outcome of their grind now i do see a little bit of a notch right there but we'll keep going down and obviously here you can see that o knife logo that is acid etched as well as d2 and then we'll keep coming down and there is a little bit of a low spot here in the grind and i noticed on this back part now the edge or the very back is pretty pretty sharp um, but 
if you go a little in front of that, uh, it does seem to roll over and it's not as consistent right here. So now let's go ahead and flip over and you have the Borzoi logo as well as the KN00321 serial. Like I said earlier, it is serialized. And again, you can see that low spot. Oh, I apologize for the focus. Let me try to fix that here. But you can see that low spot in the grind and it does roll over on the edge. Now, I don't know if that was machining tolerances or if they finished by hand, but let's if we, if we keep going down the blade, you will see again the the majority of the blade is very, very consistent. Uh, I, I do appreciate the fact, and it, it came very sharp again, but, oh, sorry, getting some hot spotting from all the lights. So let me try to keep moving that so you guys can see. And we'll be coming to the end again, and you can see that they did focus a little more on that grind. And swinging open, you will see that D2 blade it does come in at 0.11 inches thick, or just over a tenth of an inch. And with such a thin blade, such a thin frame, stainless on one side, G10 on the other, the whole thing only does come in at 2.58 ounces. Now there are no other material or blade finishes available. This is the only one I've seen, and I asked my OBI representative about that, and they confirmed that it does just come in the standard black and stone wash finish. Now touching on that accent color again, that blue anodization, I showed you it was smooth here. Uh, one thing I would have liked to have seen is if it were machined on the backspacer. This looks more like a blasted finish and then covered in blue anodized. Now it is, same the, uh, it is the same color, but the blue anodizing on the pivot looks quite a bit more glossy, if you will. Uh, I, think it, I think it really, really looks nice, and I would have liked to have seen that carry over to the backspacer as well. So getting into dimensions, overall, this is 7.92 inches, and that means that 4.25 inches is gonna be that handle, and the blade comes in at 3.04 inches. Now the thickness of this handle is point, and that blade measures at 0.74 inches wide. That's just under three quarters of an inch. But if you think just the knife looks good, let me go ahead and grab the packaging. Now, Obi is a spinoff of Olite, and like any of their other Olite products, the Obi package is very, very well done and well presented. So to start, you can see that it does have this large sleeve here and gives you a couple of the dimensions and specs. So you have your weight here, G10 and stainless steel with a D2 blade. And on the back, you just have a little bit of contact information in case you need to contact them about the knife at all. But inside, here's where it gets really nice. So you can lift up this flap. And with that flap out, we can look, it says each O knife is finely tuned by hand and expertly engineered for the best possible performance. Stay sharp with your new, new O knife. So it's always nice seeing those little personal touches in there. And before we get into the case, we can lift out this small package here that does give you a microfiber as well as a manual so you can keep your G10 and your D2 everything looking really really nice but that's not what you guys want to see so the pouch that it comes in has a very tough velcro and it is shipped inside a plastic bag uh, or a plastic sleeve if you will so it came in It came in and everything folds up really, really nicely. Everything fits in here really nicely. And I mean, that looks top shelf right there. I, I really, really like the presentation approach that they took for this. Now, one thing to note is that this does have a coin sleeve. And while other O knives have come with coins in the past and since this was released, uh, this one actually does not. So that is something to keep in mind. But getting that back out, we can move the packaging out of the way and we can do a size comparison. So we'll flip this back open and we can get this next to the O-Knife splint as well as my QSP Penguin. So here you can see, we're trying to match up the backs as close as we can. So the O-Knife Borzoi does come in as the longest of the three. The splint 
It is a little small for my hands. I've been using this basically as my glorified box cutter and box opener, but the QSP Penguin comes in just slightly smaller than it. And while the QSP Penguin's not an overtly large knife, you can see that comparing side to side, the Borzoi does come in very, very slender, but makes up for it with a little bit more length. We'll flip those over so you can see that. Now, one thing to note about the O-Knife knives is the level of quality control. Now, I don't notice any back and forth wiggle or front to back, side to side, left to right, however you want to twist this thing around. And I really, really appreciate that. When I open up a knife, I just want it to be able to work. Now, with it back open again, we will take a look at the blade lock up. And what I like to see is it going just past that halfway mark. And this does, and I can sit here and reef on this as much as I want. And I know that's not safe practices, but I can reef on this as much as I want. And this does not appear to be going anywhere. So I, again, uh, very sturdy, even though it is very slim, discreet, and able to stay tucked away in a pocket with this clip. Another thing to note, now you do have your blade centering and this is pretty well spot on. You can tweak it a little bit with this pivot pin. And this is one unfortunate thing that I have found about the O-Knife Borzoi is that the triangle threads on this pivot pin leave a little bit to be desired, if I'm speaking perfectly frank. So let's see if we can zoom in on this. There you go. You can see those triangle threads on the pivot pin and without any sort of Loctite or anything. Now I know Loctite can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on how it's applied and the amount that is applied. But you can see here with just a simple twist of this, you can start modifying that blade centering. So once it is in place, I would like to throw a little bit of Loctite on here just because those triangle threads do tend to find themselves loosening up every so often. Now, when it comes to actually opening your Borzoi knife, uh, I've only found really two successful or easily repeatable ways to open up your knife. Uh, that is one with a thumb flick right there. With a thumb flick, it opens very, very easy. But again, you do have to get past that very stiff ball detent. So once you go flying past that, it'll open no issues. Uh, the other is it does have, well, I can't even really call it a nail notch. It's more like a nail groove. So you can easily open it with in a two-hand manner too, using the nail groove, and it works just fine. However, I have definitely grown to appreciate the thumb flick. So actually opening it up does very easily bring me to the next point I want to make, and that is the ergonomics. The handle, everything feels great about this. I, I love everything. You can see a little bit of a thumb cut here on the front, and I do wish that thumb cut carried over to the frame lock as well. However, it doesn't. Uh, the only hotspot I can find, frankly, is this pocket clip. It does come out quite a ways, and depending on how you hold it, it can either dig right into the center of your middle finger, or, I mean, just wherever you're holding it, if you have larger hands, for me, my middle finger sits right there on the top of the pocket clip, and it is more or less uh, uncomfortable after too terribly long. Um, it is a thinner frame, so you do feel that. However, I don't consider that a hot spot because it's almost like you got to pay to play. Uh, you, you do get a little more discomfort with a very thin frame and when they don't have too large a chamfer on there, but the pocket clip is gonna be what I would consider the hot spot on here. It feels fantastic other than the fact that that pocket clip will start digging in before too terribly long and it's on either hand and if you do like to have a lanyard on your knife this backspacer works very well for that now i will try to get in here as close as i can you can see there is a little bit of a chamfer cut in to this backspacer here and that's going to give you a repeatable easy use without having to burn through uh, any of your 550 cord or whatever you might be using as your lanyard. So to my final point, guys, the price. This comes in at $59.95 on the Obi website. And I mean, there are granted a few drawbacks, but each of those are easily fixable. Now, my drawbacks were the pivot pin could use a little bit of Loctite. Blue, of course, you don't want to go too aggressive with that. 
And then this pocket clip sticks out quite a bit and can be a hot spot on your hand, uh, specifically the middle finger for me. So if you have larger hands, that is something to watch out for. And between the 4th and 8th of June, Obi is going to be having a sale and they're running sales on pretty much everything in their site. But if you come across something that isn't on sale, go ahead and use the coupon code TT10 and that will get you 10% off of every non-sale item and brings down the price of the O-Knife Borzoi down to $54. So $54 for something with D2, G10, and stainless, as well as some nice accent colors. Guys, I like the knife a lot. I'm definitely going to, now that the review is gonna be over, uh, I'm definitely gonna go ahead and bring this clip down and get some Loctite on that pivot pin. And this is going to go into my everyday carry arsenal. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification that lets us get our videos out to you as fast as possible. And we'll see you in the next one.